Yeah. Well, hello all. May 18th, Thursday, another IPFS Implementers Working Group. Thanks all for those who are joining. I guess I can share my screen here as well. Posted the link in the notes. Um, yeah, and so yeah, for anyone listening, right, this is a call where we, particularly folks that are doing various IPFS implementations, come together to kind of share updates, pass on any learnings, and uh, you know, collaborate on open questions that need to get resolved and block people. Um, and so again, anyone is welcome to this call, but it tends to have those who are kind of core maintainers on on implementations or very much impacted by them. And yeah, so again, feel, keep feel free to add other things to uh, to the agenda. But I guess we'll we'll start off with the IPIP IP pipeline corner. And there's a lot of been a lot of activity there. You okay to take this one, Lytle? And if you want to share screen, that's great too. Oh, uh, I think uh, I think uh, it's perfectly fine to stay on this one. Okay, sweet. Uh, so there's like a bunch of links to IPIPs, and I will quickly like briefly explain why I think those are useful highlights for this group and for the people watching this recording. Uh, those are like not ready for final reviews, but they are on the horizon. And uh, we either have a working implementation in Boxo or Kubo or are in progress or it's planned to happen this quarter or the next one. Um, and it's uh, maybe like the first one, it's uh, the smallest one, adding streaming to the routing view, V1 uh, uh, HTTP API. Main benefit for end users is that this makes uh, proxying DHT over HTTP uh, way more useful. We, you don't need to wait a minute for 20 providers. You get providers as soon as uh, HTTP endpoints discovers them. So you may, you, I get a few, I got my content, I can finish sooner. So that's uh, for uh, something like uh, Retrieval client running in a web browser with limited resources, uh, and uh, you hosting a DHT proxy somewhere uh, as a way to try first before falling back to the actual DHT um, over something like web transport transport. Uh, it creates a nice opportunity for uh, improving end user uh, uh, like perceived performance because those like milliseconds compound when you load the page or interact with something. Um, the next two, uh, 402 and 412, uh, those are improvements around existing trustless gateway spec, where you can ask gateway for a single block, or you can ask gateway for a car with multiple blocks. Uh, those two uh, IPIPs are around improving uh, the way you ask for a car with multiple blocks. Historically, you could only ask for a specific CID and entire DAG behind it. Uh, as long Gateway was able to traverse the DAG uh, over IPLD links, you got uh, all the blocks uh, in unspecified order. It, you could get duplicates or not. Usually people run uh, implement, Gateway implementation in Kubo, but that was never like, specified. Uh, it just happened whatever Kubo did. Most gateways did that. This is our attempt to one. Uh, make it more uh, useful by giving uh, end client, light client, uh, ability to request a subset of a DAG. Um, maybe like a logical subset in a sense that uh, we are not uh, talking about the actual DAG depth. It's more about logical depth of the data you request. So first, when you request something that's under some subpath, in this case entity, uh, you get blocks related to the entity, but also you get all the blocks that get you give you like verifiable proof from the root CID for you get root CID, sub, path, and then entity. So you can like go over all links, verify hashes, and make sure uh, and like car response is valid end to end. And then being able to fetch on a root block or the 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 the, the, the root block uh, of uh, the final entity gives people ability to do path resolution over cars another type uh, another type of dark scope is entity where i want this entity it could be a file or directory or maybe something else 
but I I only care about the logical entity. If it's a file, give me all the blocks, give me the like entire DAG under that file. But if it's a directory, I only want the blocks, minimum amount of blocks to enumerate contents of that directory. And finally, all that's like the default, that's the old behavior when I get entire DAG. And the second one is entity bytes in case if when I get, ask for a file or an entity which I can represent as an array of bytes, uh, only give me a give me blocks for that specific byte, uh, byte range within that entity. Um, so that's very useful if you want to translate uh, HTTP range requests into verifiable car uh, uh, transports on the backend. So that's the first one. Uh, the uh, the four twelve is about giving an additional ability to signal the block order. So we I mentioned that we have this unspecified. You get a car, it's a bag of blocks, but you, we, the car spec itself says it's out of scope of this spec to tell what's the order. It could, blocks could be in any order. Um, and at the same time, clients who fetch data as a car, um, especially light clients in a browser, could highly benefit from deterministic traversal order uh, and also information if the duplicate blocks, if the same block happens multiple times, is that block sent multiple times or not? So if you know the order and it's like uh, some deterministic order of traversal, uh, ideally it's the, it's the order of the data uh, in the, the serialized file. So you can like fetch car and deserialize it uh, on the fly. And if you know there, there, there are all, if there's a duplicate block, it will arrive multiple times, then you don't need to keep all the blocks around. You can effectively parse the block, uh, append it to the result, and then discard and process the next one. So that also translates to improved performance uh, in light clients like web browsers, uh, JS in a service worker, but also our experiments in Capilun uh, and IPFS in Chromium, maybe future implementation in Brave, which is more native than embedding Kubo. All those things could benefit from this additional signaling uh, mechanism. Uh, and the last one is adding IPNS get and put to the uh, routing v1 API, which I mentioned in the beginning. Uh, we have uh, IPNS publishing on the DHT uh, and resolution uh, through DHT. We also have a PubSub router for uh, IPNS. Uh, this would be like the third third way of publishing and resolving uh, IPNS records. And we have a soft consensus around limiting the first version of this API to the to the same protobuf format every, all the other routers use. So that will make it very way easier for us to implement that in Kubo and enable that. Uh, the default routing in Kubo uses both the HD and, uh, and IPNI at CID.contact. So this would immediately translate to end user experience, uh, being able to publish and resolve IPNS faster if uh, that uh, router is available. If not, uh, previous ones, DHD or PubSub will be used. Um, uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's the uh, IPIP uh, uh, corner. Um, um, and uh, yeah, we can, uh, if there, there are any questions, we can uh, do that briefly. Um, I see there's one about. Uh... Yeah, I can I can clarify a little. Uh, I was asking about um, if there was something specifically driving like urgency around the IPNS spec IPFE 379, or if it's just a matter of that we've like now got time to work on it and that's what we're focused on. I yeah, wasn't sure. So, uh, came up. Yeah, totally. So. Um... One uh, uh, would be uh, IPNS better for end users, but the, uh, specifically for the projects to that we have at PL, uh, we are working on project RIA, which is uh, uh, replacing a single binary, which does all the work, gateway and content retrieval with uh, more like a multi-service uh, setup. Uh, and we have a Bifrost gateway binary, which is, um, requesting cars from a uh, trustless gateway uh, currently it's saturn and that it's up to the trustless gateway to find the content to resolve uh, to find content providers however there's a one uh, case when uh, we need to do the content uh, routing ourselves and that is 
uh, resolving either DNS link or IPNS, uh, like cryptographic IPNS names. So when there's a request to the Bifrost gateway, currently it will ask legacy Kubo RPC, and we would like to remove dependency on Kubo from the RIA stack and only use uh, existing CAD contact. And we are not able to do that because we are lacking this API. So that once we have this uh, supported, we will be able to send IPNS gets to IPNI and those legacy Kubo RPC nodes could be like shut down or slowly uh, sunset. The same thing for Helia also, right? If you don't want to do like IPNS over PubSub and you're not going to do like web transport DHT things, then you can just ask someone to get you the record without yep. it that someone being Kubo RPC. Yeah, yeah. And there's like a very nice uh, property of not using Kubo RPC <laughs> in that Kubo RPC does not support uh, HTTP cache control. So you have a very popular IPNS, especially for IPNS record. It literally has a TTL and you know its expiration date. So you, you, you can set cache control based on TTL and uh, expiration date. And with something like uh, IPNI or CAD.contact, first person makes a lookup. Maybe you need to hit uh, DHT or other uh, uh, backends. Maybe it was already published. Once it's resolved, it's cached on the like CDN on front in front of the service, and every future client benefits from that cache hit. Um, so yeah, um, that's like a huge benefit being able to leverage HTTP caching that translates to end user latency on or like IPNS lookups. That's awesome, and I totally appreciate now why um, why this urgency arose. Um, that's great. With respect to that. Um, Feedback from the IPNI team is we're pretty loaded right now. So I just want to make sure that if there are dependencies that need to be resolved from our end, that um, they're clearly identified so that we can try to squeeze them into the backlog wherever. It... Yeah, I th yeah, I think like uh, the conversation I had with Mashi uh, 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 today uh, makes it like way easier on your end because we remove the they need to invent a JSON schema and all the mapping between protobuf and that. We will be only using the existing uh, protobuf uh, IPNS record format for get and put. Um, okay. So that makes it way easier to get that out of, of the door and we can like discuss adding JSON representation in a separate IP if it's needed. So in practical terms, like for landing the IP IP itself, we'll have an implementation in Boxo Kubo, both the client and server side, uh, to uh, I guess for getting utility for clients like Helia, that'll really happen once there's some deployed infrastructure out there that's implementing this, which will come when CID.contact, for example, pick, picks it up. But yeah, and in those uh, like delegated routing modules, they would have to add support for this additional endpoint. They currently support routing v1 providers. This one will be at routing v1 IPNS. Yeah. Okay. So, but yeah, taking if if a IPNI or sorry, if Bedrock doesn't work on any of this for multiple months, I, I guess what's going to be blocked. I guess this is going to be this is there is a forcing function on part of this with RIA for being able to shut down some of the, the nothing in RIA is going to need this? I mean, eventually this is cost saving, but it, it's not something we are blocking launch on. OK. Got it. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's like, uh, it's this, I uh, maybe like frame it, let's frame it this way. Ratification of this IPIP is not blocked by CAD.contact, because in general, we want to be dog fooding both client and server um, implementation of routing v1 that's present in Boxo, and we provide that to community building on uh, on on Boxo. We want to use server in Kubo, so people like we already have a routing system in Kubo. It talks to DHT, it talks to IPNIs. You can set up co custom configuration. Uh, we want to expose, and and that's exposed over Kubo RPC, this legacy R RPC, which is not 
compatible with HTTP caching. So what we want to do, give people ability who are using Kubo for self-hosting of their gateway or IPFS needs to be able to use Kubo and expose routing v1 backed by Kubo. So effectively, Kubo itself will expose routing v1 compatible with the spec, and uh, and people will be able to use that. And in theory, uh, Helia will all the modules in Helia could be sh like could ship, and people could be using them even if CAD that contact uh, is not like supporting it yet, and th that happens at a later time. Great, thank, thanks, Lytle. Uh, so, so we drilled in on IP, IP three seven nine. Were any of these other IP IPs that anyone had questions about, or wanted clarity on? I know there's been some chat um, here, but yeah. I think I can. I have some reading to do. I'm going to get connected on some of this stuff. Adine, it'd be great to sidebar maybe and chat at some point later. I don't want to hold up the agenda, but. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll just say, I guess the, the brief thing is, I guess one way to maybe break these down is uh, 402 is the thing that says, like, what are, what is the subset of data that I'm asking for? Mm -hmm. um, so we're saying there are now more sophisticated subsets that we can ask for in a verifiable way. And 412 is like, given that I am using the car format, how do the, how do all the blocks end up in the car and in what order? And like, what do I do with them? Um, areas that from, from last, from last time that we should probably, you know, we should schedule some time to continue on or like, what does an evolution of the car format look like to support things that are not small two megabyte blocks, but are large blocks that are also Merkle trees internally, um, or verifiably inter verifiable internally. And that would, mm -hmm. I guess, to some extent be like, ah, oh, okay, it's either an evolution of car or something else. Now we need to have a different discussion on how to decide what things look like when they're in that new container format. Right. Um, yeah. Um, that's kind of why cool. I was breaking it down is like what goes in mm -hmm. and then how do I how do I shuffle yeah, around no, the, the bytes when you come out? Super helpful to understand how these things fit together. Yeah. And we had, uh, I don't want to do all the meeting, but it would be great because I think we I think we can get around some of that without having to do big block support. Like maybe we just reify the Blake three tree into blocks and make life easy. Yeah. But talk about later. It, yeah, I've certainly had you all in the back of my mind as we've been working on this, but some of it is like, you know, it's like, I don't know, it's like how far along you are in terms of what features you're, you're, you know, aiming towards and whether you guys are doing. Yeah, no, we're, we're, we're really interested in like, I think the car format is a really nice place to meet some of this. And one, probably one of the easiest places to start is just to take the like three trees, squash the bottom until you get blocks that aren't a kilobyte in size, but you get closer to maybe one megabyte blocks. Stick that in a car file, give it a CID as a starting point. Now you don't need big blocks, small yeah. blocks, et cetera. Yeah, the, the that, only thing that ends up a little awkward there is that at the moment, the gateway API is only defined for the terminal elements being UnixFS elements, which are mm -hmm. raw single blocks or the UnixFS tree. And so yep. your Blake 3 tree, if you reified the tree, is a is a valid format, just like a you know, uh, whatever, like a BitTorrent v2 thing is like a valid file format, but the gateway mm -hmm. doesn't know how to deal with that yet. So we'd have to something's got to do more work on the stacks. export. Yeah. And I, I think the yeah. easier thing to do for now is to do more work on our end and basically take, if I understand this correctly, Adin, the, the challenge would be getting that Unix FS flavoring onto that raw, those raw leads. And so we would basically need to construct the linking uh, nodes as the Unix FS protocols to make them connect. Up yeah. Which would make it is a different, right? which would make it a different root CID or whatever, but yeah, yes. of course. Yeah. Correct. But Correct. like just to establish some basic, like, Hey, <laughs> I think starting with the, yeah. the CIDs will be distinct because the data is distinct is a good starting point, but also um, just a, just a thing. Like I, I, we've talked a lot about verifiable cars and like, you know, car SIDs, you know, cars that can actually hash to a SID. They're like, like I might even look more to the future towards a future car format that was more integrated with what you all are doing. Mm -hmm. um, among other things, like 
a verifiable car SID could literally be a Blake three SID if we yeah if, they're the same thing and yeah. if we use that algorithm if we yeah. want flexibility yeah. okay so it sounds like there's two conversations right there's the uh, us come to you guys where we just do what I just said and then there's the longer conversation around what does an evolution of the car spec look like that might support big blocks cool thank you for helping me sort that out it's appreciate. We'll do the well. I think we should do the first one first because it's way easier. <laughs> but like, have the spec conversation on the on the. And, and what's interesting uh, about that one, if we move on, is Will's like the piece gateway business. So like the pieces are sort of bad versions of the Merkle trees because for some reason the it doesn't. There's no internal information that tells you end of tree. You have to like magically know that ahead of time because no one decided to put it inside the CID where it would have been nice and happy. Um, yeah, and so they, they have similar life, which I suspect Will can tell us about. Yeah, cool. I know we, I know we lose you here in four minutes, Will. Um, yeah, so talking now into implementation updates and we'll let Will go first here on Peace Gateway proposal. Sure, this is still in a draft. I think one question is, is this the right place uh, to try and have this conversation? Uh, or should I go over and talk to some of the Filecoin people and go through their FRC thing? Although I think we we do maybe a better uh, spec process in IPAP world. And I think that this is not implementation specific in the same way and is sort of part of, uh, or, or it fits similarly to some of our other gateway things. So the, the thought is you have other large blobs of data that you can hash. Um, but are are not really SIDs in the way that we would say IPFS slash for the, where we mount them. Uh, Filecoin markets today mounts these at slash piece and then just has, you know, an object that is the 32 gigs or so of piece data uh, of a Filecoin deal. And uh, you can do HTTP range requests to get parts of it out. And in practice, a lot of these are car files. Um, and this gets used to do bulk data copying often. Uh, and so in thinking about what is a Filecoin retrieval provider, which is something that various efforts are trying to specify more formally, one of the things that is deemed relevant here is they would like to be able to do full copying without partial incremental verifiability of the overall piece. Uh, and so they would like to say this is part of, you know, the, the things that you would implement to, to do retrieval in a Filecoin context are, one, the IPFS trustless gateway to provide, you know, incrementally verifiable partial SIDs of stuff. Uh, but also this byte for byte uh, overall of a piece uh, should be able to be gotten and should be able to have range requests over it so that, for instance, someone could get a random couple megs at an offset, find the SID, assuming it's a car and all the blocks are under two megs, and then ask for that SID on the slash IPFS one to make sure that the provider actually has an index and is able to, you know, uh, to do that. So uh, this provides a set of both validation, but also uh, utility. So this, this is a first pass. If we think this is a reasonable uh, forum, uh, I'm happy to engage here, but I'm also happy to be told this is out of scope and to go away. So I have a, maybe like not a, there's like a prior art in boost, right? So maybe like, like this, like who would be the first implementer of this? The, the HTTP retrieval in boost? Yeah, so Boost already implements this piece retrieval uh, at slash piece. Uh, there are a couple headers that uh, I put in here to make it parallel the ones that made sense from the other gateways that we have that are not correct, but that would be easy enough to change. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I wrote a reference to that in case uh, folks don't know what Boost uh, HTTP retrieval is, but they use Boxo gateway library for like IPFS uh gateways to me it sounds like the the piece would be the separate gateway library and project that's like correct Boost, so separately they have that as a separate implementation right now yeah yeah so it sounds like it could be like a standalone library which is like independent from Bo like box or gateway because it's like it's not related to ipfs it's related to filecoin uh, we don't have pieces in ipfs outside of filecoin right is there a project which uses pieces outside of Filecoin context? I, so I mean, no, I'm not, but I'm like, not, uh, I'm not, I'm not tied to piece as the word here, I guess, like blob or something that's just, or, or, okay. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, the thing is, like, I don't know what piece is. Yeah. It's a slightly bad. It's a. It's a slightly bad Merkle tree, that of 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 verifiable data. It sounds like people blob. know what it is. It sounds like people are working with it. Is the spec? But at, at the end of the day, yes. it's a SID yeah. that it's maps to stuff that that SID specifies. But it has less restrictions in terms of IPFS semantics, like that it's under Formex. Yeah, I mean the the weird thing about why well, I would say that piece the piece endpoint right now is literally a block gateway <laughs> that that just accepts very large blocks and doesn't verify them till the end um uh but the client could i mean it, it it's it, it's well, a, a well, range requests over a sid yeah but it can't verify a range request right so these are pieces these are chunks of information that like whatever like name we want to give this, whether we want to like differentiate it from the existing gateway spec or whatever, I feel like this is a good venue to have it because this is true for there, there are exist multiple of these things that are large Merkle trees of data that you might want some of, and you might want to say, please turn on verifiability. And maybe you want to say, please turn off verifiability. All right. I, I just, I want to say, I don't understand why this is an IPFS specs because like, we want it to match. This isn't IPFS specs. This is IPIP. This is interplanetary specs. Is it? I mean, oh, it says IP. I mean, it's in the IPFS repo, but this is an IPIP, not an IPFS IP. It just seems to me. Okay. So like, like we want this thing to be used for Filecoin, right? Like that's what we want it for. And like, we want it to be used for Filecoin in the exact way that it's already used. Like, like we don't want to add like, uh, you know, a Blake three hash possibility for like large blocks for, you know, the, for the, I, I'm just saying like, like, I feel like by putting it. So, here, so I think I disagree, Hannah, which is we want other implementations of markets to also be able to provide this. And so we need a governance process and we don't have a governance process for this anywhere else. Well, that, so when Venus comes okay, and has okay. some different semantics, where is yeah. that happening? All right. So this was my question: Is the only reason it's here because we don't feel that the FRC is in, it has adequate governance? And if so, like that should be addressed, not not like let's throw it in IPFS specs because there's a call where you can get a bunch of people to give input. <laughs> and yeah, my question is like, it, doesn't like Filecoin actually had like the the improve like the spec improve improvement process before IPFS. Why are you, you are not doing this as a FIP? So there, there's some. Well, there's we have FIPs, but those are only for consensus changes, and this is not a consensus change. Yeah, that this is a general, but there are FRCs, but there FR, there's a there's an unused process in the Filecoin world for proposing off chain standards, and but it's like it's more of a like here's a thing you might consider using it, you know, like, so I, I just feel like we should address the governance issue with the, with, or at least raise it with Filecoin folks before we throw it in here. So. Yeah, I, I'd say like for here, we would have to define what piece is. I don't know what piece is uh, to start the conversation. We could keep it in the repo until we know what piece is, reference the spec of that thing. And then we decide if it's like generic enough to be IPFS. Uh, it sounds to me it's not, but maybe I after I read the spec, maybe I'll change my mind. Well, I feel like we we do content address things, right? Like if if people want this to be the home, it can, right? Like not every content addressable spec thing will end up in will end up here, right? Like, right? Like we other groups have other specs for other things. If people want to put content addressable things here you know uh well why not it seems like we 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 do care about moving around content addressable chunks of data in verifiable ways if other people would like to and they want to talk to other people who do this i don't know we're, we're here i that's that's maybe my view um, maybe like a good, good question would be why would we have this if we don't have car spec on the website only because the car thing lives in the IPLD repo, but we could move it here. Yeah. So right? the thing is, like, if we move cars here and we have like a section of like uh, content addressable transport formats or whatever, car would be there. The, this thing could be there, but we could create like a space. Um, 
maybe that would be the value added to the community, cleaning up that and moving cars and giving creating space for people to improve uh, by proposing other containers. Uh, that's like a meta comment. The, this, this one, the specific one sounds like this piece has a spec, which is very specific to Filecoin. And that's my, maybe not problem, but observation. Okay. Yeah, I'm still wrapping my head a little bit around this. So like, what's, I guess, what are appropriate next steps on this? I mean, I was hearing you, Hannah, suggest Filecoin should go push on its like outside of consensus change governance process. Um, I mean, I, I guess I want to like, what isn't good enough about an FRC will for you besides the fact that no one does them? Oh, will's gone. We'll have to roll. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would just, there is a process. It's called an FRC. And I just, I just think it should be there. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'd say but, at the very least, a reason why it, wherever the thing actually lives, you know, right? I mean, like the same, you could say, you could talk about these things, right? It can be an FRC, you can come here and discuss it. The, if it's relevant to the rest of the, the group of people, Yeah. right? But I, I would say certainly given that that community of people probably cares, as in like, you want multiple Filecoin people to do this, you need right. some way of having a pointer that says... Yeah. Yo, we, we plan on doing this. Would you, other people who care in Filecoin yeah, ecosystem, uh, uh, you should show up. And, yeah. You yeah. Know. I'll, I'll go talk to Will. I was, I, <laughs> I, I was honestly surprised to see it show up here, but, but that was, that was, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, sound, sounds good. Thank, thanks, Hannah. Yeah. Um, I'll just move on. I don't know how much pertains to this group, but just letting folks know, I mean, we've been talking about deprecating JSIPFS, like, We've actually written out what the plan is, have the process of what we're going to do, um, just finishing doc, uh, completing some of the messaging on that, and then we're going to start adding, you know, dep deprecating NPM modules, notices on readmes, and, um, you know, going through all the issues and you know, letting people know if they can solve that with Helio, with our migration guide, or et cetera. So that, that's all going to be, you know, I would I would say, going to be kicking off with more disruptive changes next week. Um, so just an FYI that that's happening, but I think we've done a pretty good job of documenting what's gonna happen and why uh, in this issue, if anyone, for any, for anyone who cares. So that's just letting people know that's coming. And I guess uh, bounce to you here, Lytle. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, I, I think we mentioned that before, um, we've been struggling with Kubo RPC legacy. Uh, mm -hmm design decisions or uh, it not being designed to be exposed or used on the web. And um, also the fact that JSIPFS, uh, which now it's officially uh, being uh, de deprecated or we started talking about it. Uh, the JSIPFS RPC was modeled as a clone of Kubo RPC over time. We had some interop tests, which kept, um, them in check and mostly like 90 something percent of commands behaved the same way. Um, but that was, uh, if, if we had to change anything in Kubo, we had to, to make breaking changes. We had to apply them also to JSIPFS. That was like a both maintenance burden and not the best uh, experience for the uh, JS ecosystem users. Uh, now with Helia, uh, JSIPFS is not that, uh, it's not a maintenance priority. And um, at the same time, we don't want to uh, make a breaking change of removing API v0 pops up. There are people who build products on that or uh, and need more time to maybe switch to Helia, maybe move away from uh, pointing at uh, some Kubo running somewhere. Uh, so there's a um, comment in the an update in the deprecation plan around API v0 pops up in Kubo. Uh, TLDR is that we will not be removing it anytime soon, um, but we will be uh, removing interop tests. So starting with the next release, uh, it, things will work the same, but uh, over time we will not be testing if it work, if, uh, uh, the RPC client from JS uh, IPFS works with Kubo. 
Um, we will also be not testing if the messages can be exchanged. Uh, the idea is that people will still be able to use uh, PubSub commands uh, in kubrpc, but we will no longer have interop with JSAPFS, and we will be discouraging people from using it in production. Um, one of the idea is to have some sort of a, a rate limit if you are using it in production and you hit more messages per second than X then you will get uh, a warning in logs saying, hey, maybe you should not be using it in the production. Maybe at this scale, you should be writing your own uh, PubSub validator. Uh, maybe the default one is not the best for you. Um, so I think there are more details on, on, the, on the thing, but um, this is just update because I know uh, I, a few people asked me during IPFS thing um, recently, is it being removed? Uh, what's the timeline? So we are not removing it, but we are not guaranteeing interop with JSAPFS RPC because JSAPFS is being deprecated. Hey, thanks, Lytle. Any any other implementation updates anyone wants to give? Like, I know we've got Lassie and Iro folks here. Not, not that you have to. If there's anything you want to share, please feel free to. Not much from us. We'll be starting into a spec next week just to get some of this rolling. I think I have some homework cut out for me on uh, cool. car file. I'd, I'd love to kick off the car file next conversation. I don't know where that happens, but I'm assuming that starts as a Filecoin Slack chat and evolves from there. But it'd be great to get views on what y'all are thinking and what timeline you're thinking for a car file evolution. But from us, I think my key responsibility is as June shows up, starting to emerge with the spec and an understanding of how we're planning to do the export IRO data to um, Kubo format, UXFS format. Oh my gosh, I'm losing my language, but to do the bridging that way, and then uh, we'll go from there. But that's that's kind of our plan and our timeline is we're aiming for early June to see some first signs of uh, create with IRO send out in a format that a gateway can read. And then ideally start to think about how we do the ingest in the other way um, in, June, July timeline. But I'm assuming the like car file evolution is going to be a long conversation. So like I'd rather just strap in, get some design thinking going there, and we can we can talk about that at length. Great. Thanks, Brendan. Uh that's all that we officially have on the agenda. Although I saw you had a note here, Torfin, about ambient discovery. That I guess that, that got discussed. I I I missed it. That got discussed somewhat at the a content routing working group earlier this week, right? Yeah, the recording of that work group, unfortunately, I still haven't gotten an email uh, with the Zoom link. So I haven't posted the video yet, which I'm sure you would have liked to have caught up on, but uh, I'm trying to recover it. Um, the question was, and uh, I felt bad for just dropping this on Liddell and then leaving it in the notes. So I wanted to bring it to the broader group, um, is that the uh, ambient discovery um, basically, our, our plans right now is we're going to have multiple synchronized uh, instances of SID.contact as our goal by uh, the end of the quarter, or not of SID.contact, but of IPNI. Uh, and that um, our goal is to start testing across those instances uh, how we're going to keep the instances synchronized, but also monitoring and having a dashboard of all the instances and how out of sync they are with our, our like reference implementation in dot contact. So um, at that point, like the next phases to actually decentralize and distribute lookups uh, are going to start to become dependent on ambient discovery. And so um, my hope is that by highlighting this to this group, that you all can, um, you know, find uh, where in the priority of the backlog of all the work that you have to do, um, this can live so that we at least have a good sense of when in the future um, we can start to like test that functionality and um, work with it. One thing I'll, I'll flag, I guess, to, to, to separate is like, there's, there's two different problems. So there's, how do I find my list of routers? And then there's how do I decide, given that I have, you know, 
to um, equivalent ways of getting the same data, which one of those is good and which one of those is bad? Like which ones, which ones as a client should I bother using, right? Um, and like those can be tackled independently and you can decide ahead of time which ones like are rise higher priority on your list. Um, for example, you might decide if like the set of, you know, IPNI providers you're looking at in the short term is like less than 10, then I'm, you're less interested in discovery. You can just be like, here's 10 options, right? Uh, and you're more interested in how do I decide which of those 10 are viable? Um, or if you wanted to take a look at like the routing v1 stuff, you could say, well, I can run my own DHT locally, or I can ask someone else to do the work for me. Let me compare those two and see if asking someone else to do the work is giving me good enough results compared to doing the work myself. Um, and so maybe you want to decide, maybe like the, the more ambiguous one is the more important one, which is like the say client side local reputation thing and then discovery we got a bunch of options available uh ambient explicit hard-coded whatnot um that can get tackled later that'd be my that's like my two cents this is a good observation Adine, because i i think we will, so we're at seven seven instances operating right now. I, I don't suspect all of those are gonna get synchronized. I, I think we'll get the majority of them, however. So we will have, I, I think, somewhere between five and seven SID dot contacts running out there, which provide reliably a relatively synchronized lookup point. Um, how far we go beyond the first 10 instances, uh, I don't expect that this is going to be like something wildly adopted out there. I think uh, it, it's a pretty intentional, um, you have to very much want to be running one of these instances and go through a bit of uh, heartache to get it operating. So um, I, I suspect we'll see some more of these. We have a few parties interested in running them right now, but I, I don't expect you know anything past 20 in the foreseeable future. So you know, it's, we'll be maintaining a roster of these that we could pull and potentially set up reputation against. So if we want to do a bit of work breakdown and focus on uh, the reputation aspects of this, that might maybe make a lot of sense. Um, but anything we can do to make forward progress, I think, on this is going to be really impactful to us kind of come the end of this quarter, kind of early next quarter, as we've got all these instances out there and we're bringing them up to synchronization with ours in actually practically using them, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's it's also nice that if you, sorry, go ahead, Brendan. Yeah, just a question I think would be worth getting on the recording. These uh, other instances, Torfin, are they run by other organizations? Yeah, actually, we only run one instance right now, and there's seven. Um, yeah, yeah, no, it's it's a lot of, you know, working with the community, and they're really trying to help. There are some, you know, you and I can grab a call sometime, have some coffee and talk about it, but there's a lot of, um, there are some selfish reasons that they might run these right now that are independent of the reasons that we would potentially push them to. Um, but uh, th there's a whole conversation around this. I can kind of pull you in on that. Totally. I, I was aware. I just think that others should know that, like, I think one of the, you know, challenges with when we talk about the indexers is like establishing, reestablishing decentralization or distribution of bare minimum. And like, this is really exciting to see. And I just we're we're trying. That and said, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And like, it's um, to your point around, you know, discovery. I think Adin's right to point to like, how practical is the consideration of the size of the set? Um, but also, like, I think we've had numerous, we have this pattern across like distributed and decentralized efforts of like hand waving and saying reputation someday. Um, maybe that's, maybe this is a chance to like, we've been doing a bunch of work inside of IRO specifically as we've been looking at a lot of the tail scale code base, which actually has some incredible reputation stuff built into understanding of network latency and just like what paths to use for the most efficient connection through an internet and 
having all of that be client side has been really fun because it's local first and inherently trusted because it's your process, right? And I think that's just been a really nice mechanism for talking about building up your reputation systems. It's secretly a reputation system. It's just all built around latency, right? And there's no reason you can't translate a lot of those lessons to stuff like how do I choose which index to use. Um, and so I think it's a fun conversation. I'd love to have that conversation here. And I think that if we established some reputational stuff, there are some patterns in there that are really helpful. Um, it's also really easy to get wrong. And so like, <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff. Be happy to chat about it here. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. So I guess you're hearing there is some, there is some form here for this story. I mean, I think there's a practical question of like, what would it take for, in this case, uh, Kubo Boxo maintainers to, right, right, right now we've, we've hard-coded CID.contact. You know, what would it take to be landing in an ambient discovery uh, and decision logic of which router to use? Like what would we need to, what would need to be seen so that we'd feel good about that, those changes landing? Uh, so I don't know if Adin or Lytle, you have any initial comments on that, but that's maybe some of the signal that Torfin would want. And if that's already been covered in the working group, content routing working group call, then feel free to skip it here. We, you know, we've, I think we've lightly talked about the subject, but I think where we're at right now, and Adeem, correct, put me back on course if I'm off, but my perspective is, is we're like at about the point where we need to start like actually trying to design document, like how we go about this so that people can kind of chew on it together in a way that like proceeds towards a goal. Um, we've got a lot of ideas and I think we've got pretty strong ideas like among all the parties that are here, but um, it's kind of at the point now where, uh, and this is what I'm looking for in bringing this up is um, can we start like kind of progressing towards a, like a documented solution that we're gonna, you know, try to fit into our backlog somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I think like I would, because it's like, uh, the reason I, I separated out like the, we'll say the reputation stuff from the, like the finding the candidates part is that I feel like there's a lot of, of you know, optionality and speckish things that need to be agreed on to do the finding stuff part. But you could also probably just take the easy road, which is that you have, you have a system that you give it, you give it some info. It's a key value store. You give it some info and it spits you info back. Right. And you could just use any indexer as a way of like discovering all the other indexers. And so like the relevant piece of information becomes which ones do I actually use? Um, and that's nice because it's all client side, which also means like you can iterate it on you can iterate on it very quickly. You don't necessarily need like global agreement. You can just like kind of do the thing and see how see how it goes. Um and evolve the understanding of the system and whether the reputational tactics in use will be specific to IPNI or whether they'll be more general and reusable across various routing systems. We'll find out. Um, and, and so I think like that seems like a pretty good place to start. And as soon as something like that exists, we have, we have various, you know, venues, uh, and, and production systems that we can like try it out and see how does it go when we just like hard code the one instance versus we try and multiplex a bunch among a, among a bunch of instances. Does a reputation system end up doing the same thing where we find one good one and then we narrow yeah. in and it ends up being the same again? <laughs> is it different? I don't know. But this these are things that we can evaluate. This is logically like the with the path that I keep ending up going down because like when we talk about reputation, we're considering things like how in sync or out of sync, like how much lag is there between the reference implementation to dot contact and these other instances. Well, uh, Mossy refers to it like gravity. Like it's always, they're always gonna be behind us like a little bit, right? Because we're currently ingesting at a rate that they can't quite keep up with. And so all these other instances are always going to be a little bit behind us in reference to how real the network visibility that they have at any given time is so you know you want some reputation around that like how likely is a particular indexer i'm going to perform a lookup on going to have the stuff that i want to find but 
that isn't solely like one that's like one characteristic of answering that question sorry though no, please yeah yeah Oh, yeah, so I think like just to follow up on the uh, one thread that uh, Adin mentioned, um, it's a, it's an a, we have a very nice capability here uh, in that the client has, assuming we have puts to the indexer, right? Um, if we have that uh, uh, implemented, clients will be not only able to like test if they put something to indexer and they get that back, they will be able to put something to one indexer and calculate how long it takes for the other one to synchronize. And we can not only test each indexer, but we can also uh, build a reputation, how uh, like good citizens there are, how often they synchronize. Um, Kind of like in the details of like what if, if there's one thing that we've learned in project ria is that having a client which is able to verify is very powerful because people are not able to cheat uh it's kind of similar here uh we have an open system uh, anyone can run their own indexer but then the client uh, has an agency to verify it's not like there's a centralized orchestrator which says this is the good uh, indexer. Well, it may be good for this client. I can fly to other continent. It may be not anymore. Uh, or maybe I just cross the border and I no longer can reach it. Um, so I feel there's a nice opportunity to one, build a reputation system uh, that uh, lives on the client and is specific to the uh, client. And then uh, that's also like a forcing function for us to finish uh, uh, spec work around uh, indexer puts. Currently, Kubo is only doing gets uh, to be able to build this reputation uh, I mentioned, or at least like start playing with it. We need first uh, to land uh, puts. Uh, that's that's an exciting exciting point to land on, and ultimately the reason I'm bringing this conversation up is just to find out where this lands in time because. While it is really important, the urgency, I think, is kind of somewhat unknown. It's just that we're going to find ourselves into a design system here before too long, where this will be the natural conclusion that needs to come out of the work that we're doing to realize like kind of the future benefits that we're hoping to achieve. If that makes sense. Good. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're basically yeah time with it. Th thanks, Torfin. Um, yeah. Th thanks all for participating. We'll get the recording up here shortly. Um, but yeah, th thanks all. I will end things now. Anyone? Sorry, does anyone have anything else you want to say before we sh before we shut things down? You're great, Steve. Thanks. Okay. Rock. Rock on. Thanks all. Hope you have a good rest of the week. Ciao for now. Good to see y'all.